Good afternoon, everybody. This is Dennis Cavanaugh here with your National Weather Service office out of Little Rock. And we're going to talk about the eclipse weather forecast and uh, talk about what the latest forecast update is looking like and what your chances are of having at least some viewability of the eclipse in just two days' time now. So this is Saturday. April 6, 2024, we're looking at the forecast for about 1 p.m. on basically 1 to 3 p.m. on April 8th for the total solar eclipse, which on this map here is outlined in the dashed black lines. Uh, looking at this map here, this is just looking at all of the models that we have, looking at the likelihood of having decent viewability. Doesn't, doesn't mean the chance of having totally clear skies, just not enough cloud cover to totally block the viewability of the sun. So looking looking at this, uh, basically our chances for less than 50% uh, cloud cover uh, in those green areas look like we have really high chances for less than 50% chance, uh, lift less than 50% cloud coverage, which is going to extend for most of northern Arkansas. And with today's forecast, the viewability forecast has actually gotten a little bit better. Uh, we're actually looking at portions of central Arkansas now also having a high chance of less than 50% cloud cover. Now those areas in yellow, which is basically the rest of Arkansas in the path of totality, uh, it has a medium chance of uh, less than 50% chance cloud cover, so a, a medium chance of good viewability of the eclipse. And that's going to be basically from the southern part of central Arkansas to the southwest uh, going into north Texas there. So things are looking a little bit better. Uh, the biggest forecast challenge is still going to be how far north a warm front moves uh, across the state during the day on Monday. And that warm front area, that's basically going to be those areas included in red where you're going to have overcast skies, really low cloud cover, so that you wouldn't be able to see the evolution of the eclipse. Now, even if there's clouds, it'll still get dark which admittedly is pretty cool for, you know, the middle of the day in, in April. Um, but you wouldn't be able to see the progression of the eclipse, the progression of the moon uh, moving over the sun. You wouldn't be able to see that under those overcast skies. And that, that's going to be those areas in red on this map. Uh, and we'll talk about how various models are looking at the timing of the warm front here in just a minute. Uh, as we take a regional view here, so we started off zoomed in on Arkansas because we are Little Rock National Weather Service. So we are mainly focused on Arkansas, of course. Uh, but looking at you know some of the regional areas, if you go to the northeast, uh, southeast Missouri also has uh, pretty high chances of good viewability of the eclipse. Uh, however, if you head southwest across much of North Texas, and especially if you get into southwest Texas there near Austin, San Antonio, and, and areas to the southwest, it does look like that warm front is, is going to be stalled out to the north of those areas, keeping uh, pretty solid cloud cover to the south. So not looking great for, uh, for eclipse viewability in that part of the region. However, again, here in Arkansas, the further northeast you go, uh, it's looking like you'll have a, a better chance of less cloud coverage and a better viewing experience of the eclipse on Monday. Uh, if we take a look at the entire path of totality across the United States, uh, again, you see uh, that area where there's not really a whole lot, there's not really any clouds at all. You, you kind of see the land mass uh, beneath the image there in northeast Arkansas into southeast Missouri. Uh, that's our highest chance of Mostly clear skies, giving you a very good chance to see the eclipse in those areas. The blues is still a pretty good chance uh, of, again, there, there's going to be some clouds for sure, but not enough clouds to completely block out uh, the view, your viewing uh, of the eclipse of the sun and the progression of that eclipse on Monday. Uh, and you see, if you go further southwest, much of Texas is expected to be under at least 60% cloud cover. And as you go further southwest, it's even higher with 80 to 90%. Uh, if you're going much further to the northeast, if, you're, if you've got friends or family, uh, or if you happen to be traveling, uh, you can see southern Illinois into Indiana, decent... Uh, 
decent viewability chances. And same thing in Northwest Ohio. Uh, you get up there to, uh, towards Lake Erie, uh, Northeast Ohio, Northwest Pennsylvania, uh, and Western New York. It does look pretty cloudy again. Uh, but if you get into those Northern New England states, uh, far Northern New York, into Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, uh, actually it looks really clear. Uh, that might actually have the least amount of cloud cover in the whole country. Um, so that's uh, that's kind of looking at the path of totality across the United States in terms of cloud cover. Uh, and now we'll really focus in again on Arkansas and that forecast challenge. Where is that warm front going to be? Uh, in this image here, we're looking at four different forecast models uh, showing the the exact same time, about 1 p.m. on Monday. Uh, the purple areas are areas of cloud cover in the models. Uh, the green and, and yellow and orange colors are basically less clouds, so not, not as much clouds, so not cloudy. Um, you can see there on the top left-hand side, uh, we're looking at that probably the worst case scenario for, for Arkansas, where most of central Arkansas is under uh, that cloud cover, under that low, that low stratus, the warm front has basically moved all the way north. Uh, it'd be, it would be north of I-40 uh, there, just leaving far northern Arkansas um, basically in a more cloud-free zone with much uh, the two-thirds of central to the southern portion of the state under low stratus, which would uh, which would really interrupt your viewing experience of the eclipse on Monday. However, the, the good news is the other three models here, we can see they keep the warm front much further south. Now, each of them has a different forecast for exactly where that warm front's going to be, uh, but all of them keep them more or less south of central Arkansas, giving us a pretty good chance uh, to view the full evolution of the eclipse uh, before that warm front moves north and then brings some showers and thunderstorms across the state later in the day on Monday, uh, more widespread after sunset Monday evening. So three out of the four big models that we used to, to create the cloud forecast are showing a good viewing experience. One of them is showing a, kind of a terrible viewing experience, but um, th that one that's showing the bad, you know, the bad cloud forecast, it, it has every chance of verifying. And we won't really know uh, where that warm front's going to end up because the, the warm front did it's not even in place yet. So we're going to have a frontal boundary that moves across the state tomorrow based on how far south that weak cold front moves in. That's going to determine how fast the warm front moves north on Monday. So this forecast will change. Please keep visiting our webpage to get the latest forecast updates because this is all in forecast model world. This is all in computers. Once we actually are able to pin down that front where it actually Actually is in Arkansas, we will be able to provide a much higher confidence forecast and what the clouds are going to look like on Monday across the state. Uh, basically, after the eclipse, we do have a chance of severe thunderstorms, mainly across southwestern Arkansas uh, Monday evening, uh, then again on Tuesday, uh, and then the severe weather chances spread a little bit further north as that as that warm front becomes a stationary boundary and just kind of wobbles north and south across the state uh, from Monday night through midweek, uh, those chances of severe storms, they're not, they're not all that high, and we're not expecting like a major severe weather outbreak. However, some strong to severe storms are still possible. Again, really bullseyeing the southwest uh, portions of the state uh, late on Monday through the day on Tuesday when many people may be traveling and leaving Arkansas once, uh, you know, once they're done viewing the eclipse. Uh, looking at the rainfall forecast, so just apart from the severe weather threat, the, the multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms Monday night and Tuesday and, and during the day on Wednesday, it, it's, it's going to add up and that's it, going to be pretty widespread uh, shower and thunderstorm activity. And again, wherever that frontal boundary uh, sort of wobbles north and south, that's where those storms are going to focus. And those are the areas that are going to see the highest rainfall. So uh, across Arkansas, we're looking at anywhere good chance of seeing uh, two to 
six inches of rain uh, with higher amounts in the south. And that's going to be the, the rainfall forecast total from Monday through Wednesday. So it's not going to fall on any one day, but we are looking at some pretty widespread uh, heavy rainfall here, uh, again, late on Monday through midweek. And so, you know, for folks traveling, that, that may complicate things, especially if, uh, you know, if, if you're on the road Monday night or during the day on Tuesday during some of those heavy showers and thunderstorms, you know, traveling on the roads, it'll reduce visibility. And if you get off the main interstate, you could encounter some low water areas. So you want to be real careful uh, with that if you are traveling around Arkansas uh, early next week. Uh, for viewing the eclipse, uh, just... Some, some safety tips or reminders, hopefully, at this point. You do want to have specialized eclipse glasses. Sunglasses won't work. It'll still damage your eyes if you're viewing the eclipse. And you should, you should have those eclipse glasses on, uh, basically, all, you know, leading up to the eclipse and then immediately after the eclipse. If you're in totality, you can take those glasses off during totality. But before and after, you're going to need those uh, eclipse glasses on to protect your eyesight. Um, we, you know, this is a really an amazing experience. Uh, we're excited to watch the eclipse, and we hope you are as well. And we hope uh, the clouds cooperate so you get a, a nice, a good viewing experience through the evolution of the eclipse here. But you you want to protect your eyes. We we don't want uh, you know we don't want your your eyes going bad because you're staring up at the eclipse. Have those uh, eclipse glasses ready. Use them before and after the eclipse, and then you can stash them and just enjoy the eclipse in its full glory uh, during totality. And that's about all I've got. You can always find our latest forecast information on the web at www.weather.gov forward slash LZK. That'll take you directly to our office's uh, website there. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter uh, at, at NWS Little Rock. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can always give us a call at 501-834-0308. Thanks for listening and uh, stay tuned to the forecast.